I know I'm now preaching to the saved, <laughs> but this is really important. This ought to be beyond politics. It ought to be beyond election seasons. And it's a gift we can also give, not just to ourselves, but to the rest of the world. You know, we have the National Academy of Sciences was established by Abraham Lincoln by executive order. And then later the National Institutes of Health were set up. Our country has always believed in being not only a laboratory of democracy, but a laboratory of science and advancement. And you can't do that with a straight face and leave women out. The last thing I want to say is, because my job is to bring Barbara up, is we, we've been friends for a long time now. And we became friends in the 92 campaign. And then she owned me for life because of the way she treated my mother, whom she met at my inaugural ball the night I was inaugurated. And they walked off together hand in hand. I knew they'd get along. And one of my favorite pictures I have is the, they're both their backs in their nice formal gowns walking hand in hand away. My mother had already been battling cancer for three years. She had 50 weeks exactly to live from the night I was inaugurated president, 50 weeks. And Barbara called her every single one of those weeks until she died. And... Here, the, the funny thing is, my mother came to Camp David at Thanksgiving. She was getting two blood transfusions a day to stay alive and look normal. And we were having a big time. She was having a big time. She was a nurse. She had a good life. She was totally philosophical about the fact that it was coming to an end. And I said, you coming back for Christmas? She said, oh, I don't know. I said, what do you mean you don't know? She said, well, I got to go to hear Barbara's concert in Vegas, and I'm not sure you'll get me back in time. <laughs> so there I was. You know, the White House at Christmas time was chopped liver compared to. <laughs> so when I promised faithfully that I would get her back home so she could go to Barbara's concert in Vegas, she then agreed to have what she knew would be her last Christmas with her family at the White House. I say that because that's a side of her a lot of people haven't seen that I'll never forget. The other side of her is what's really important for this, which is that if she were a member of Congress and I were still president, she would be on what I called our just say yes list. We had a very small list of, of congressmen, literally, if it was fewer than 10 people, which are called the just say yes list. Is when they call you for something, just go on and tell them yes. Because you're going to do it sooner or later. Because it's just like they're like a dog to the bone. They won't let you go. They'll make your life miserable. So just go ahead and tell them yes. And save all the time. Doesn't matter how outrageous what it is they ask. Tell them yes. So the world can go on and the work can go on. So she called and started, you know, laying down the law to me about all the facts here. And... So I just finally said, stop, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and, you know, thank God she didn't ask me to be a, an experiment for our mentalists or I would have been in trouble here. I think he put that number in my mind. I'd much rather even put something there than read what was already there. <laughs> and so would most of the rest of you. But anyway, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to get to a point in your life where your obsession, where your just say yes obsession almost certainly will help thousands, maybe even millions of other people before you will personally need it. Because whatever it is, you could get anyway. So thank you. For all of us, thank you for being my friend. Thank you for caring. Thank you for all those telephone 
crazy telephone conversations we've had over two decades saying, did you know this or that or the other thing? And she's outraged about something else. You know, I, I never thought anybody could care a lot about more things than I cared a lot about. She makes me look like a heartless, dumb piker <laughs> on this stuff. And now she has found a cause that you can love and embrace even if you're a conservative Republican. <laughs> Unless your heart has been taken out of your body, you need to care about this. You do not have to agree with her politics. You can care about this. And so... I love you for doing this, and we all do, and we thank you. The stage is once again yours. Thank you.